It was like, you know, it's just at that time we were easy to kick the shit out of. And that's when Lorenzo, well, Dana uh, White, uh, who at the time, uh, you know, um, into the sport, I think he was doing like a kickboxing classes and stuff. I don't remember the Jiu Jitsu. He worked with, uh, what was it, uh, oh, uh, John Lewis? Yeah, John Lewis. Yeah, who, uh, what was the name? J Sect. Yeah, J Sect. Yeah. So then he got his two buddies he went to school with, what happened to be Lorenzo and Frank Fatita, who, you know, owned uh, Station Casinos. They're the largest employer of like, you know, uh, 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 of, uh, locals in our industry, you know what I mean? Uh, Non-union uh, non, um, employees. So they had some money. So they went out to Pride, checked it out. They liked it. So when they came back, they actually negotiated a deal to buy the UFC for $1.5 million. And that's when Tito's era took off and started moving. And so we have certain loop points that you can look at. Okay, that saved us, that saved So when Tito joined in, he, I think he did the first pay-per-view fight. Was UFC 32? About 33. 33? 33, yeah. 33 okay. Bay. In fact, they fucked it up. Bay. It was so new that they didn't realize we should allot it for a amount of time. So, like two rounds into the main event or something with your fight, they cut off the pay per view. Two minutes in a row? No. no, I think it was like two 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 rounds oh, in a row. Rounds. Yeah, it was like three. Like the last two that rounds. Was right after 9 11. I remember that. They're going to yeah. cancel cancel the whole thing. And they end up just saying, the hell with it, we're going to make it happen. And they yeah. made it happen. They sold out the Mandalay Bay. That was, yeah. uh, I was there for that fight. Yeah. But the pay-per-view come out early. Yeah, well, because it went they, too far. Because all the matches had draws. Yes, all draws. the matches went the distance, and at that time, the UFC you know, was still figuring out, right? Yeah, so they were like, "Oh, they allotted you this amount of time, which they should have done." And the UFC figured out, like, "Okay, well, when we have this amount of time, the fights we have scheduled, if they go the distance." will still be okay. And if the fights go short, there's a quick knockout. Our preliminaries that we taped earlier in the night, well, we could fit those in. Oh. So that way the fans at home are still watching shit. If you're there live, go get a drink. You know what I mean? Like, but they did, they aired on that side than the other way. But it was, a, you know, a lesson learned by experience, you know? And then I think the next big event was probably uh, uh, John and, uh, or John fucking. Uh, Forrest? Forrest and uh, Bonner. The, 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 the Ultimate Fighter wasn't doing that well. It really wasn't. In fact, uh, when I had spoken to Lorenzo, I don't know, he, he was more in with him than I am at the time. Uh, he, he told me they were about to sell. Like, they were screwed. They were like, you know, 20 million in debt and whatnot. 15 million in debt. I talked to Frank and he was like, we're about done. Yeah. And they had that Ultimate Fighter and it saved everything. Yeah. And the final round of that fight. So, like, they, yeah. they, they looked at the numbers and all of a sudden, like, people started calling each other up. Hey, man, are you watching this? Turn it on to Spike. And so then people like that. That, if we didn't have that, we wouldn't all be talking right now.